the title of mine is quite sort of controversial to some people, where it says hemophilia does not define me. Um, and it never has. Um, I had two older cousins, I well, still have, they're still around. Um, and they, one of them's got 5% uh, factor and the other's got three, and I had 0 0.1. Um, you'll find out in a second why I said had and not have, which uh, still will never get old for me. And I always grew up, um, family was always massively important. Friends, they sort of, they create who you are. Your, your body isn't, that doesn't create you. It's when you first find your friends, it's when you first grow up with your morals, your family. Um, that's what defines you as a person. Not that you've got hemophilia, not that you suffer from a condition. Everyone has troubles that they go through. It's how you deal with that. So that's pretty much why it's called hemophilia. It doesn't define me. Um, so, unlike everyone else, I haven't got a fancy uh, presentation with um, photos. I've just got some simple key words that I want to go through with you. Um, so, school, being a child and friends, I just want you to imagine the first day when you went to school. Um, you know, your mum's obviously, or your parents are happy that they're getting rid of you for about half an hour or, or a day. But running to that playground, playing sports or playing it or something like that, or just communicating within a classroom with people that you, you've never met before. It's kind of like what we're here today. You've, you've never met people here, so don't be afraid to just introduce yourself to each other. Bring that child back out in you. Have a laugh. Um, tell some jokes. Be yourself. Um, and the other one is work, self-treatment, and sports. The people here who have self-treated, you know, if you've got prophylaxis, if you're lucky enough to have prophylaxis, then you know... It's every other day, it's, it's a burden on your life, it's something that you're constantly thinking about. Have I got enough factor? Um, have I taken enough factor? Am I going to do something that could cause me to have a bleed even if I'm on prophylaxis? Because the people that are on it know that prophylaxis doesn't work 100% of the time. I have, I've been lucky enough to be on it for my entire life and okay, against the doctor's you know, request, I played sports. I played rugby, I played football, I played hockey. Um, and yes, I was on crutches pretty much every other day, um, or at least once a week. But that's what your friends are there for, to carry your books and uh, to carry your lunches and all that. So it's quite good. But work as well, I, I was a cameraman. Um, so I used to travel around the world and sorting out visas um, and just taking the medicine with you is just a constant hassle in your mind. You can't even focus on what you need to do. I used to interview golfers, and when you're trying to sit down with a pro golfer, you don't want to be worried about, oh, is my medicine going to get here in time, or something like that. You need to focus on your questions. Um, so gene therapy has been a massive change of my life. Um, this is a bit strange, because before where I've done these speeches, I've always followed a, do a doctor, that spent the past hour and a half informing you what gene therapy is. Um, so hopefully you can go across to a couple of the seminars throughout the week and get a lot more knowledge about what gene therapy is, how it works, because I'm no doctor. I was just a, I'm just a test bunny. Um, that the advantage is tr trust and risks. The risks were never a problem to me. Um, they all got told to me. I got um, a detailed sheet that I got forced to read, but I pretty much signed it before I read it, just because family and, you know, the stories that you hear on social media of, you know, the great, great people that you've seen today as well, what the struggle they've gone through, like I said, I was lucky to have prophylaxis three times a week, so, and I'm lucky enough to be offered a trial where this could possibly change not my life, because or it already has, but other people's lives, future generations. What we're doing here is bringing through the future generations. This isn't about how it changes my life. This is about how it can change people in 5, 10, 50 years' times, 100 years' times. It's going to change the way we look at hemophilia. And it's going to change people's perceptions and their lifestyles, really. Because no matter how you think, yeah, no, this is great, Positive personality, I always find the silver lining and you know, no matter how positive you are, you know you're living with a condition and you know you've got to treat yourself and be careful. But um, 
the main reason why I took the trial as well is my sister, I've lost my presentation again, that's fine, you saw the key words, like I said, there's not many of them on there, um, so she was having a child, a uh, little baby boy, and she's a carrier, and um, obviously she was petrified that he was going to have haemophilia, she's a massive warrior, total opposite to me, um, and I sillyly or stupidly offered to let her practice on me, which really hurt. Um, every other day she was doing my infusions, um, which, yeah, that really took a toll on my, uh, my veins. But it was to help her again. It was to give her that bit of security that no matter what happens, she knows what she's doing and she, she can feel a little bit safer. And the people that have hemophilia here or have a, a bleeding disorder, we, we live with it. We know what it does, but it's what the strain it puts on your families. It's your parents that are constantly worrying about you. And imagine if they didn't have to worry about you anymore. Imagine if your levels went from, like mine, from 0.1% to up to 30. And it's, it's crazy for me to say it, and it's probably crazy to hear, but it is out there, and the trials are happening, and there is a, is a future for it. Um, it is your 24-7 care that everyone dreams about. You know, there's not a day that, that you're never covered. There's not a minute that you're never covered. I played three rounds of golf in three days. I couldn't walk at the end of each day because it was like my ankle was tired because I've got a target joint. But the next morning I woke up, I stood up, I walked around and I went again. And that would never happen before, like never. And I was just in Glenn's session before I come here, and I've done a bit of quick maths about what the gene therapy can do for um, factor eight distribution. Like I said, I'm not very clever, so my maths might be wrong. So um, if it is, I do apologize. But if somebody gets the gene therapy at 18, and they live until they're 88, it's a nice round 70 years um, with gene therapy, that means that even if they're on prophylaxis every other day, they would be treating it at least 100 times a year. And if you times 180 by 70, that gives you 12,600 treatments. And that can treat up to 700 people. That could give them prophylaxis every other day for 18 years. For the first 18 years of their life, another 700 people can get prophylaxis because one person takes gene therapy. So... I know it's scary, I know it's a new treatment, it's never been done before, but if we don't try now, if we don't push, then we're never going to change. People are going to constantly struggle in countries where they shouldn't. You know, so we've got to take the opportunity. If you get offered it, I highly recommend that you really think about it. Obviously, talk with your families, but, I mean, I'm fine. I haven't got a third arm. Everything's in great condition. I haven't felt better. So thank you. I did have a little thank you slide, but um, yeah. And obviously this is a lot easier than me just talking to you. So if you do have any questions, I'm here all day and I'm here, I believe, until midday tomorrow. So come and grab me or drop me an email. I'm more than happy to answer any questions.